All right, good morning. We are going to be continuing with Moses for you that were uh, with us last week and for you that are joining us this week. Uh, we've been looking at the life of Moses and, and thinking about what it means and what it looks like to follow God with our lives and to follow him into the unknown. And God is going to call Moses and we, we looked at his early life, his beginnings, we looked at, at his failure and the 40 years he spent in the wilderness and taking care of sheep and how God called him. We considered how he was an intimidated and insecure about that call, how he pushed back and resisted that call. And then even after he said yes, some of the struggles that he went through, we left off last week on Friday with Moses obeying God right, and saying yes to God, being willing to do what he called him to do even when it didn't make sense. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to hit the fast forward button a little bit. All right, and we're going to go through the, the ten plagues right, that God brings on Egypt and God uses Moses and to bring Pharaoh to a point where he lets the Hebrew people go. And that's where we're going to pick up the story. I want you to think about something, though, as we, we do that. We're going to be in Exodus 14, if you have your Bible. Uh, Exodus 14 is where we're going to begin. I have a question for you. Have you ever panicked before? <laughs> it's Monday at Chehi, all right? If you've never panicked before, it may happen at some point today, right? We all know what it's like, right? It is a common experience that we all have, panic, right? And there are certain things, there are certain situations that cause us to feel panicked. It is normal, right? You will experience it. We all experience it. And today we're going to look a little bit about what happens when we're following God and things don't go as planned, or things look difficult, or things don't look like we expected, and we're tempted to panic. And we're going to see the Hebrew people panic. But amazingly, we're going to see Moses come to a place where he has experienced God in his life, his faithfulness, and his working, and his power. And Moses is going to not panic. And from that, we're going to see what we can do, what we can learn about God, and what that means for following God, and what it means for following God when we feel like we're panicking. Because following God is not easy, right? Following God into the unknown is going to require faith, right? Following God into the unknown is going to require faith. It means there's going to be places where God puts you, where you have to trust Him, right? Where there is no other option, there's no way forward except to trust Him. And it's easier, you know, we have a tendency, we want to see it, we want to understand it, we want to know it's safe, we want to know how it's going to work out sometimes before we're willing to take the step. But God often asks us to take the step, right? To take that step of faith before, right, before we see. And that's a little scary sometimes. And sometimes that causes us to panic. So we're going to fast forward, like I said, from where we left off with Moses going to Pharaoh, and now all the ten plagues have happened. When, you know, I thought about this. It would be sometimes nice if life had a fast-forward button, right, to get through the hard parts, and a pause button for the good parts. Are you with me? And a rewind for some of the mistakes. Are you with me? But life doesn't work like that. But we can fast-forward to Exodus chapter 14. So let's, let's begin there. And I'm just going to summarize a little bit uh, for the sake of time. But in Exodus chapter 14, beginning in verse 1, God gives instructions to Moses, right? They have been freed. Pharaoh has given them permission to go. And now God gives Moses direction on how to lead the people. And the directions, I'm just going to summarize a little bit from, from the first few verses. The, the directions that God gives them really don't make sense. They're not the shortest directions to get to Canaan, which is where they think they're going, the land that God had given to Abraham. Right? That's where they believe they're going. God is setting them free. God's told a Moses this is where he's going to lead them. But the directions he gives them are not the best directions from a human standpoint. They were going the wrong way. And in fact, not only are they going to go the wrong way, but they're going to go into the wilderness. And not, are they, or not only are they going to go into the wilderness... But they're actually going to go to a place where they're trapped. With a mountain on one side, and a mountain on the other side, and a vast sea in front of them. And so, God is at work, but it doesn't look like what we might think, or what they might think 
was the way God should work. And isn't that true in our lives? Right? That, that many times we say yes to God, we're seeking to follow God, we want to obey God with our lives and the call that He's placed in our life, but it doesn't look like we think, or He's not doing what we ought. We just think, God, you said, you promised, but why am I here? And not only that, but now Pharaoh is going to have second thoughts about letting the people go. And he's going to regret his decision. And so, not only that, but then he hears reports that these slave people are wandering and they're going in a direction where they are hopelessly trapped. And so Pharaoh is going to seize this opportunity to command his army to go and to bring them back. So let's pick up in verse 10. Exodus 14, verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. And you know, if we put ourselves, and we did this with Moses last week, if we put ourselves in their sandals, are you with me, right? And you know, there you are, you're following Moses, and there's been God's visible signs, these plagues, God's protected you, and he's brought you out, but now there's an army chasing you of well-trained soldiers with weapons, and you don't have any weapons. How would you feel? What would you do? Anybody, help me out. Panic. Yes, good choice, right? Which way to the panic room, please? They looked up and they panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. And they cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, Why? Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Right? Immediately, when the adversity appears on the horizon and danger is there, they're immediate, they, they cry out to God, but then they start complaining to Moses. Moses, why did you do this? Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? And, and maybe there's a little clue there because maybe they didn't even ultimately want to leave Egypt. They wanted to be free from the burden of slavery and from their oppression. But I think they might have been rather content in Egypt, where it was familiar to them. You know, sometimes we get into a place in life where we feel comfortable, or we say, I'd prefer to stay here, but God's calling us to go somewhere else. He's calling us to do something else. He's calling us to get outside of our comfort zone, and we push back, and we resist. And so they are panicking, and you know, there, there's something about, about fear that, that really really can distort our, our view of things. And they should have been able to step back and say, this isn't good. Pharaoh's army's real. Pharaoh's army's dangerous. He could kill us. But God has performed miraculous signs. He's protected us from those things. And even the last plague, the death of the firstborn, he passed over our homes, right? And he gave us specific instructions about how to honor him and prepare for that. We saw his power, so surely God will take care of us now. But fear is, is an enemy to faith. Fear makes faith hard. And notice what they, they say in verse 12. They say, didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? Right? Have you ever told someone, I told you so? Anybody? All right. Right? Probably most of us, right? I told you this would happen. I knew it. I knew it. I was right. And this is what the Hebrew people are thinking. Moses, we told you this would happen. Didn't we tell you this was a disaster? Didn't we say, leave us alone? Let us be slaves to the Egyptians? It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. Right? You can see how much fear has distorted their reality. Right? God is at work on their behalf, and yes, there's danger, and yes, there's an obstacle. Right? It's a dead end. There's nowhere for them to go. Either way, they can't go left, they can't go right, and they can't go forward, and behind them is certain death. It is a bad situation, no doubt. But fear has distorted their reality, the reality that God is at work on their behalf, that He had made promises to them that He'd be with them. Listen, they got t-shirts printed. Right? That's how bad it was. Right, let's go back. If we can go back one slide. They got the, it's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness t-shirts. Right? With all the graphics, right? They said, man, Moses, this is a bad idea. And you know, in the past, in these moments, Moses has really struggled, hasn't he? Remember when he first went to his people and they believed him, but then things got worse 
and they got mad at him. They said, may God judge you, right? And Moses is like, God, why did you ever send me, right? This was a bad idea. Moses said, I told you so to God. And Moses wanted to go back. He wanted to quit. But notice now where Moses' faith has come. He has seen the hand of God in his life. He has seen the power of God at work. And God is growing his faith. And notice what Moses says here. Moses told the people, verse 13, Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. And this is really an incredible statement of faith, isn't it? Right? You know, have you ever said something and it came out of your mouth and you're like, did I really just say that? Do I even really believe that? And I, I can't help but wonder, when Moses said this, he thought, did that really just come out of my mouth? Did I really just say that? Because Moses does not yet see how God is going to do what he just said God was going to do. But he believed that God was going to be faithful to his promises, and he was going to be faithful to his people. Right? God is always faithful to his promises. And he's always faithful to his people. And so he tells them, he says, stop panicking. Get it together, right? Just be still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. He believed God. Notice verse 14. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. He says, the Lord will fight for you. You know, so many times in life we feel like, I, I've got to do it. I've got to fight this battle, right? I, I've got to handle this problem. I've got to get myself through this situation, right? And Moses says, look, we're in a situation. I'm not going to pretend it's, it's good. We're in, a, we're in a situation that we can't help ourselves with. There, there's nothing we can do. We don't have a boat. We can't go across the sea. We're not good mountain climbers. We, that's not an option, right? We can't go back because that's either certain death or being marched straight back to the slavery that we were in. So he says, God is going to fight our battles. God's going to fight for us. And isn't it amazing? We have a God who's willing to fight for us and to fight our battles. He brought them that far. He was going to be faithful. Right? Many of you are familiar, right? This is one of the more familiar scenes and stories in all the Bible, right? And so, verse 15, the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. And then he tells him what he's going to do. How he is going to divide the waters and make a way for them. How he is going to protect them. Look at verse 19. And, you know, God has said in these previous verses how he's going to use this situation to display his glory and his power. And so that the Egyptians would know that he is God. And then in verse 19, it says, The angel of God, who had been leading the people of Israel, moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. And so basically, as they are there now at the shore of the sea, right, they're trapped, and God places himself between them and the Egyptians. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night that was leading them now goes behind them and it guards them. The Egyptians cannot see them nor approach them for the whole night. And God causes the waters of the Red Sea to part. He sends a strong wind to dry the ground all night. And the next day they walk through the Red Sea. They get to experience the impossible. And God delivers them and then he brings judgment on the armies of Egypt. And so God was at work. There, there's so many places that God even showed himself to the Egyptians when they realized everything was going sideways and they were trying to follow the Israelites. Verse 25, it says, at the end of verse 25, it says, they, the Egyptians shouted, the Lord is fighting against, he's fighting for them and against Egypt. Right? Even they got to see Yahweh, the God of the Hebrews, is fighting for them. And then notice all that happens, verse 31, because of this. Verse 31. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe before him. They put their faith in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Right, God took this situation that he allowed. He allowed this situation to happen. He, he could have led them differently. They could have went on a shorter route. They could have avoided the water crossing. 
But as we're going to see, as we see in Scripture, they weren't ready yet. You know, sometimes we think we're ready for something, but we're not. Sometimes we think we're ready to do something, and we're not ready yet. God has more preparation to do in us. He has more work to do to prepare us. And so God was using these circumstances to build faith in His people. Now, if you know the rest of the story, it's going to be a tough journey. Right? Faith isn't easy. Faith is not easy. It's not simple. It's messy. It's complicated. And there's lots of challenges to faith, and especially the adversity that we face. But God was using this to build their faith and give them an opportunity to grow their faith in Him and in Moses. Moses acted in faith. He trusted God, and God responded. Right? God responds to our faith. It's an amazing thing that God has ordained that when we exercise faith in Him, that it honors Him, it glorifies Him, and He responds, He acts according to our faith. So following God, which I believe that God's put a call on every one of your lives, right? Every one of you are called to know God. You are called to know God, and He has made a provision for you to know Him personally and relationally. He sent His Son, Jesus, into this world. He lived for you. He died for you. He rose from the dead. He appeared to His followers. He ascended to the Father where He sits at the right hand and He's coming one day in power and in glory to restore this world to the perfection that He designed. And He invites anyone and everyone to come to Him and experience forgiveness of their sin and restoration to a relationship with Himself where you might know Him personally. You're called to know God. You're called to to follow Him with your life. Right? He's given you gifts and talents and abilities that He's designed for you to use for His kingdom and His glory. You're called to worship Him, to serve Him. And I want you to discover and know the God who loves you, the God who has offered you redemption, the God who offers you an invitation to serve Him with your life and to glorify Him. And I want you to follow Him, but I know this, that doing that will not be easy. It will be challenging. You'll feel weak, you'll feel overwhelmed, you'll feel intimidated, and sometimes you will feel like panicking. Sometimes you'll feel like panicking. Sometimes you will be panicking. And in those moments, we have to remember, right? We have to remember that the God who called us is still with us. And the God who called us is going to accomplish His purpose for us. We looked at a verse last week from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. This is faithful as He who calls you, who will also what? Anybody remember? He'll do it, right? The one who called you will accomplish it. And so when we're tempted to panic, right, and when everything is in us is tempted to panic, remember that. Remember Exodus 14, 14. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Right, when you hit those panic moments, whether it's the little things or big things, you can say, yes, I feel like panicking. Everything within me says panic, but God says he's with me. He fights for me. He is for me, and so I can just calm myself in His presence and say, God's going to fight for me. I am okay. The prophet Jeremiah gave us these words in the midst of a very dark and painful time in Israel's history and his own life. But he said this in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21. He says, This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in Him. We have incredible promises from God. And so notice what Jeremiah says. He says, I call this to my mind. Right? That I have to bring, sometimes I have to bring these things back to my mind. He says, I recall, I, I, I bring my mind to these truths. And he says, because of that I have hope. He says, the steadfast, the unending love of the Lord, it it never stops. Even when life is difficult, even when I'm panicking, even when it's hard, He says, mercies, they're they're never going to run out. Right? They're new every morning. You're faithful. You're my portion. So I can trust you. And I can put my hope in you. I want to give you three things that, that God was doing for His people and for Moses that I believe He will do for each and every one of us. Number one, God was at work on behalf of His people. And it's important for us to remember, God was at work. Even when it looked like they were going the wrong way, and even when it looked like they were trapped, and even when it looked like it was hopeless, God was at work. 
They couldn't see it yet. It didn't make any sense. They were angry at God. They were mad at Moses. They wanted to go back because it was better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But God was at work. And listen, He still is. And He is at work in your life and in my life. And He is working out His purposes for you. Trust Him. Number two, Moses exercised faith in God even when he couldn't see. And really, that's where faith has to work. Right? Faith has to work when we can't see. And so Moses, he couldn't see what God was going to do. He didn't know God was going to split the sea in half. He didn't know how he was going to do it. But Moses had come to a point where he says, I've seen the faithfulness of God. I've heard the promises of God. I've experienced them. And I know he's going to act on behalf of his people. So he told them, stop panicking. Be still. Look up. You know, it's so easy when we're panicking to just look around, isn't it? To look at our circumstances and say, I can't handle this. Hey, guess what? You can't. Life will often bring you things that you can't handle. Right? God will allow us sometimes to be in places and say, I can't handle this. And God doesn't expect you to handle it. He says, remember to look up. They, they, to the left mountain, to the right mountain, in front the Red Sea, behind the armies of Egypt. But up, they could look up and see God. Moses chose to do that on behalf of the people, and so must we. Sometimes God will put you in a place where the only direction you can look is up. And that's the best direction to look. Number three. God responded to Moses' faith. Right? God responds to faith. He will respond to your faith for His glory and for His purposes. And so I want to encourage you in those times where you're seeking to follow God and everything within you says panic and everything within you says I can't and everything within you says this is a mistake and you're angry at God or maybe you're angry at whoever got you in that situation to remember, right, God is with you. Stop. Be still. Calm down. Look up. And remember, God will fight your battles. I shared a quote last week from Corrie ten Boom, right? She lived in Holland with her family. She became well known because her family hid Jews and hid those that the Nazis were persecuting. They eventually were caught. She was imprisoned with her sister Betsy in a Nazi concentration camp where her sister died. But she survived, and she wrote and talked and spoke much about God's faithfulness, even in the very worst moments of life. And she said this, she says, if you look at the world, you'll be distressed. Anybody ever get distressed looking at the world? Your world? Your world might distress you. The stuff, your family stuff, your school stuff, your health stuff. And then the world around us, right? All the stuff. I mean, if you just watch the news and that's all you ever did, you'll be distressed, won't you? She says, if you look within, you'll be depressed. Right? She says, if you only look at yourself, you're going to get discouraged, you're going to get depressed. But she says, if you look at Christ, you'll be at rest. And so that's my prayer for you this morning, is that you will know that you can always look to Christ. You can always look to the Savior who loves you, who died for you who rose from the dead for you, who prays for you and intercedes on your behalf before the Father, and who loves you with an unending and everlasting love, a God whose mercies are new every morning, whose faithfulness never ends, and that you'll remember to look up. Let's pray. Father, there have been many moments in my life where I have been tempted to be panicked. But I know that those moments are moments that you want me to trust you. And to remember to stop just looking around and stop just looking within and to look up and to see you for who you are. And to remember that you're a God who is faithful to his promises and faithful to his people. Father, I thank you for this group that you have brought together this week of students, of staff and counselors and faculty. Father, I thank you that you have brought us together to this place where we can encounter your presence together, where we can grow in, in, in our music, we can grow in our relationship with you, we can grow in, in, in so many ways. And I know you've brought us here to do so much. And Father, I pray your blessing over this week that it would be a, an incredible week uh, of encountering you in every moment of life. But Father, I pray right now that if someone is struggling with their circumstances and they're struggling with feeling panicked and overwhelmed, 
that you remind them that you see them, that you care for them, and that you are willing to fight for them. Help us to trust you and to grow in our faith and our confidence in you. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.